obviously, uh, Chris and Daniel are not here, um, but they've done a whole lot of work behind the scenes that you may may not be aware of. So I, I would like to thank them at least this way, uh, publicly. Then some other administrative issues are, please fill in the evaluation for this course online if you haven't done so. I think there's another day or so to get it in. Uh, I take it really, really seriously. This course is so much different from last year based on the feedback and evaluations I received. There's a number of major changes that were implemented based on last year's students. So I do, I do use those substantially. There is one other final piece of work that is due for this course, and that's a reflection and a peer evaluation. Now, reflection is an important part of self-directed learning. It comes at the end after you've done any piece of work. You should reflect back on it, and it's been shown that it is a way to solidify your understanding of the material. So I will post that reflection on Friday, and you have a whole week to complete it. So it's, it will be through the Quest system. You go in, you can work on it, you can come back to it later on, you can go type in some things, change it, edit it, and you'll have a whole week to do so. And it's going to be about 5% of the course grade. So you'll be reflecting on all aspects of the course, on, on your learning through, through this term. So let's recap and see this course in perspective. We had four major themes coming through. We started off with economics over here, and we spent at least a month on that. Then we moved over to safety. We considered some safety case studies, and we then learned about the six layers of safety to mitigate some of those issues. Then we spoke for several classes on operability. And operability ties in very carefully with safety. In fact, that these two topics are almost interchangeable, and I think next year I might switch them around um, in the order of presentation. But either way, operability and safety always go together. Has op hazard and operability studies. They talk about things such as reliability, starts up and shutdowns, and they're kind of it's a it's a very hard to define topic, and. As far as I know, we're one of the only universities that teaches it. So a lot of it, as you saw, saw in the operability topic, is based on experience. So the fact that we have redundant pumps is something that just comes from experience. But it's not something that you have to wait to experience. You can certainly learn, learn about it ahead of time. And so we covered it here in the course. And then the last topic we considered was troubleshooting. We've had several classes on that, and Dr. Marlin introduced a systematic way to work through <coughs> troubleshooting problems. And this year, you had two goes at it. And many of you chose in the tutorials to not use the troubleshooting method. That's, that's quite OK. At table form, many of you choose, chose not to use it uh, and work through it in your own kind of way. Uh, you may have filled in your S's, N's, and D's, but you did that after the fact. So that's, uh, that's, that's your own choice, but at least you realize now that there is a systematic way to work through it. And we are not pretending that in full lectures you're going to learn a successful approach to troubleshooting. Uh, troubleshooting is just one of those things that comes through from practice, and now you have another way to practice with. So those are the four major topics, and then we just looked at a little bit of ethics and professionalism in today's class yesterday. I hope you realize by this period of time now, so we've covered September, October, November, three solid months of material that you've, you now, if you think back to where you were in September to versus now, that's part of reflection, if you think back and the process that you've gone through to get here, you've realized that you're capable of probably a whole lot of more than you may have realized um, prior to starting this fourth year course. You also were exposed to material over and over and over again in assignments, probably to the point where you're so frustrated, like, why are we doing this another time? Um, especially on the economics topic, which has been so repetitive um, in, in your exposure. But I'm hoping at least that you see how the various courses you've learned about in undergrad have come together in 4N. So you saw a bit of 3P, 3K, the two the second year fluids course, or you may have taken it in third year, the e-transfer course, all of those topics coming together here now. And you've also hopefully learned some other skills, such as your uh, writing skills, and if you had a chance to stand up and present in some of the tutorials, 
just getting over that fear of standing in front of a group of people and colleagues. Some of you, I always get this every year, there's two or three people that say, I realize at, at least this has taught me I really hate what I'm doing. Okay, so a few people go away and say, I never want to do this again, I'm just going to go to grad school, do something different, so I'm going to move to some other field of study. And even if this course has achieved that, I'm grateful for that because no one wants to be stuck in a career that they hate for the rest of their lives. So if you realize that, that's great. Um, it may not be the best thing right now for you, but at least you've realized it and recognize you don't want to be doing this. Now, when it comes to self-directed learning, it's probably one of the, the only courses in your undergrad where you experience it so strongly. You may have felt at many times that you had no guidance, like where do I look up what a compressor is? Or how does the water gas shift reactor work? Where do I turn to to find this information? And you all did, by the end of your project, at least with the help of your group, and maybe a bit of help from myself and Dr. Marlin, come to some sort of way of figuring out how you can learn it well. Um, there were many open-ended assignments, questions for that in the tutorials. The projects were definitely challenging you on that aspect. Um, and it forced you to realize the importance of group work. So, so at least that's, that's one of the, the objectives of this course, is to help with that. And this second last point is really critical. You've probably started to quickly realize, if I had infinite time and infinite resources, I could do a whole lot more. We, we obviously can. But you're now starting to quickly realize that you can prioritize what is really important for a project, for a due date, versus what you'd love to do if you had more time. If we had more time, we would have loved to have used Aspen and do a lot of simulations and figure out operating windows very carefully and sized and designed our reactors just so. But we don't have that luxury, so we have to resort to very quick methods and methods that can kind of get our answer in a short time frame. So, so at the very least, you've learned that and then hopefully just improved your time management. This year, um, just back on that group work topic, uh, I love, we made a number of changes to this course and I'm pleased to say that at least the group work went much, much smoother this year than it did last year. So last year was pretty catastrophic with, with several groups. Uh, this year we had not too many major incidents. So at least group work uh, went a lot smoother this year. So I was glad, glad that some of the changes worked from that. So after this course, uh, your SDL doesn't stop. You will always keep learning if you go into chemical engineering or some whatever your role and profession of choice after this year. Um, but you will always learn from the process you're working with. You'll do experiments and learn some more from those experiments. You'll go to conferences and talk to experts and other engineers about things and learn from them. You'll be able to use websites and research material that way <coughs> from company-sponsored courses and seminars. And then just staying up to date with the literature, trade journals particularly, not just technical uh, university journals, but trade journals as well. So I'm hoping that you that you do that and stay up to date. And we, as we learned in today's plot of ethics, we have an obligation to ourselves to do that as well, and to our colleagues. So let's take a look at uh, what's in the exam. Well, all everything is um, so. Economics, once again, will be an exam. Safety, operability, and troubleshooting are there. Um, there's a section on professionalism and ethics, and then anything that was covered in the assignments and, and in the class time is so is an exam. So if we look at economics, we covered right at the start that very first tutorial. We looked at a little bit of personal finance. We looked at cash flow diagrams, understanding how they work. We were very comfortable after three, four weeks of converting money from one period of time to another. So future cash flow expressed in today's cash flow is something we can quite comfortably do right now. Um, you learned how to evaluate various projects. You, tax and depreciation always take those into account. And you learned how sensitivity analyses are done and why they're important and their interpretation. So bring to the final exam, please, the list of CRA classes and those cost indices. Same as in the midterm, we have to inflate uh, values over time with the cost index, either CEPCI or Marshall Lynch and Swift. 
Process safety was our next topic. We looked started that around Thanksgiving and, and considered that for about two weeks or so, where we looked at this hierarchy of, of the six layers. Um, and we focused a lot on layers one, two, three, and four. We then looked at hazard and operability studies. Uh, sorry, just prior to that, we looked at some of those, those relative rankings and checklists. And then hazard and operability studies, and you saw that again in your final project, you considered those practice and guidelines. And that VP Texas case study, we also considered in the tutorial <coughs> over there. That was a good justification um, for, this, for this material. Regarding operability, we looked at, at most of these details up here. Operating window, flexibility, reliability, transition, start and shutdown, batch to continuous interfacing on the process. Um, so all of those topics were there and you saw them as well in your projects. So your project was a chance just to apply this material. This material is not difficult. Okay, this material is actually very, very straightforward. A lot of it is from experience that Dr. Marlin has put those notes together and Dr. Woods over the years have compiled all that material from their experience. Um, so it's not hard to apply. As you saw, the equation is very straightforward and the concepts are straightforward. So it's just something to be aware of. Then when you look at flow sheets in a new light. So one, actually one object of this course is now when you look at a flow sheet, you're going to have a very, very different insight onto that flow sheet than someone else who's graduated from another university that hasn't seen this topic on operability. Then finally troubleshooting as well is another topic that you likely will have an advantage over other people on, in that you've at least learned a systematic method to solve problems. Whether you choose to use it or not, or whether you use it so subconsciously you don't actually recognize that you're following these six steps, um, if that's what you're doing, that's, that's okay, as long as you're using a process and you have some means of trying to eliminate various hypotheses, not just hypotheses you've come up with, uh, came up with, but colleagues may have proposed various causes, you now at least have a systematic way to rule out and prove and disprove and try to come to a root cause. Uh, we also looked at ethics in today's class of professionalism yesterday, please bring that code of ethics to the exam uh, and, and look at the, all of it is on the website as well if you don't have the sheet printed out. So exam is this Friday at, just after 12 at noon time. It's an Iber win. Uh, you can bring absolutely anything you like to the exam. So any any notes from Dr. Marlin's slides the chapters from the book that he's allowed us to use for this course. Um, you can bring all of that with you. You can work in pencil or in pen <coughs> or in mind. Um, you can answer questions in any order. Use bullet points. Be as concise as you need to be um, to get to get your message across. And then, importantly, if something seems incomplete or open-ended or unspecified, you can make reasonable assumptions and should make reasonable assumptions. And continue on with your answer. So that's, you've had ample experience with that sort of type of question in the assignments. And then just finally, thank you again, once again, for all your feedback from the midterm evaluations. Those were helpful. The evaluations you're working on at the moment will be helpful for me. As I said, last year's course is actually very, very different to this year's course of instruction. So I appreciate that. If I see you in 4C3 again, that would be great. I think that right now you're ready for 4W, so good luck with that and for the final exam. <laughs>